three, two, one, it's showtime. We're gonna have a real good time, feel good time. Spreading love and joy and laughter all over the place. We're gonna have a good time, we're gonna have a good time. Don't be so legendary, Sherry's got you feeling good. And now, your host, Sherry Shepard. TGIF, I have to say, you haven't been feeling your best this week, and I've seen you persevere and push through like no other, so I'm proud of you. I'm really proud of you. Yeah. Thank you. I think this Friday, I think my voice is gone. I think so. It's all right, it's all right. That means God is saying you gotta shut your mouth this weekend. <laughs> you know who happy about that? Jeffrey, because hell no, I'm gonna be screwing up the stairs. Jeffrey! So. <laughs> I need to, like, uh, uh, when I get down here, I'm gonna rest. But I'm telling you, I am still feeling good because the Sherry Show was nominated for an NAACP Image Award. <laughs> so, um, and last year, we were so honored to win for best uh, show. Outstanding talk show. Outstanding talk yeah. show. So we're nominated for uh, two categories this year, outstanding talk series, and I'm also out, uh, nominated for outstanding host in a talk, a news information series or special. So that's like, you know, the NAACP Image Awards was viewing, like, that was viewing time in our family to watch this so, so show. So it's so exciting that uh, we will get to actually be there for it. So viewers at home, you can vote to help determine the winner. This is on you. You go and you scan the QR code on your screen to cast your vote. You open up the camera on your phones and you hold it up to that code. Then you press the link that pops up, or you can go to vote.naacpimageawards.net and vote for The Sherry Show and for me. <laughs> oh, gosh. And I think you can, uh, with this, you can vote every day or you only can vote one time. Do yeah, I, I haven't brushed up on the rules, but vote as much as you legally can. Okay, there we go. <laughs> You were legally, yeah. Uh, I also want to give a shout out to my dear friend Lou Nell because she made her Broadway debut in the musical <laughs> Chicago this week. And everybody came out for her. Bevy Smith came out to see her. And I was all the way up in the balcony because I, I kept coughing and I was all the way up there so she wouldn't hear me. But Lunell, you were absolutely amazing. Broadway looks good <laughs> on you. Now, everyone's excited for the playoff games this weekend. And yes, they are. Travis Kelsey and the Kansas City Chiefs are playing the Baltimore Ravens. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, and maybe Travis's brother Jason is gonna be less rowdy this weekend, I don't know. Cause last weekend, Jason went crazy. After Travis made a touchdown, he jumped out of his suite and into the crowd shirtless while chugging a beer. Okay, that should be an Olympic sport right there. But on his podcast, New Heights, Jason revealed that his wife Kylie was not happy about his actions at all. She asked him to be on his best behavior because it was their first time meeting Taylor Swift. <laughs> Take a look. I don't even 
even know what to say, Mrs. Kelsey. I'm really not used to telling a man what to do. And he goes, I don't care what you say. I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, so, I, I, you know, he's not even gonna compromise. He's not gonna do nothing you say. When you say, babe, please don't take off your shirt, it's Taylor Swift. And he says, uh, I don't care what you say. I'm taking off my shirt. I, you know what? I, hopefully, I guess the shirt was a tear-off already. Because <laughs> I've never been with a man who says, when you met me, I was blacked out drunk. <laughs> so, Mrs. Kelsey, I'm not quite sure what to say here, because you and I operate a little differently. <laughs> but I know... I would have loved to have known what went on through your mind that when you met him, you met Jason, he was passed out drunk. And you looked at him passed out drunk and said, yep, you the one I'm gonna marry. <laughs> that is the... <laughs> but I do have to say this. I think I know why she married him and why he has his charm. Because Jason did a really good deed after he ripped off his shirt and he jumped out that box. He helped a young fan meet Taylor Swift by lifting her up so that Taylor could read her sign. So, I guess that that balances it all out, Mrs. Kelsey, because, uh, you know, I hope that when he takes off his shirt, he does good deeds like this all the time. Because <laughs> I think that that's the part that she fell in love with. But here's the thing. I look at that so funny. I'm looking at this podcast, and I'm marveling, because if I go to my girlfriends and I go, I know every time y'all see him, he's passed out drunk. <laughs> and I know every time you see him, he's ripping his shirt off. But he's such a good guy. <laughs> he does so many good deeds. My girlfriends would be like, are you crazy? <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> it worked for you. Maybe I need to expand my thinking, Mrs. <laughs> Kelsey. <laughs> I do. But I do. Marco. Marco, because you're in the sports, yeah? Yeah. Like, what's... Like, what is the bit... The thing about him that everybody just loves so much. Oh, he's a real likable guy. He's, he's, like he's, he's retired now, but he's a great player, and he's yeah. really, really likable. Okay, even when he rips his shirt off and he does That's crazy the likability part right there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. So if I come to you with a guy and I go, he takes his shirt off all the time and he's drunk all the time, you like him, Marco? I mean, I'm that guy too. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what happens in the commercial breaks that the people don't see. He rips his shirt off and gets drunk <laughs> at the Cherry Show. Well, he's already about flexing already. <laughs> All right. You just can't help it. And ladies, and there you go. Do you know you always got a man that's gonna flex his pecs? You better start looking. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Marco. I love you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that, Marco. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, y'all, Gail King's interview is still making news and it's still making me crack yeah. up. Gail sat down for an in-depth interview with the Pivot podcast, and one of the topics that they touched on was dating. So yesterday, we told you that Gail said she wants a man of color who calls her baby. She also said she wants him to be able to say words like MF. Well, the guys on the podcast told Gail that she may be a little intimidating to men because of who she is. Take a look. One thing you want in a man is like if you you want to be able to take him to the White House. Yes, to the and backyard bar bargain. Right. So yes. I can say And they're comfortable in both places in both spaces. Right. Yes. And so normally though, when somebody says something like that, it's metaphorical. And you know Okay, yes, I've been to the White House. Exactly. Yes. Yes. See? Yes. And but when you say you're not intimidating, <laughs> most people <laughs> Like normal okay, humans, okay, okay, okay. they don't go to the White House. Okay. So like, I don't so go I've to, been the to the White House, House all the time, I want a Ryan. Super <laughs> <laughs> I think this happens to women who are like successful. Every once in a while, men. Every once in a while, men get intimidated. But for me, I generally think men are not intimidated by successful women. I just think that, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff that they're dealing with. But I don't think they get intimidated. I think if you go to a regular man, like a construction worker, I don't think a construction worker is intimidated because he's getting every doggone woman, okay? <laughs> I went out with a man who worked at the airport, and all he did was he, he got the suitcases, he stood them up, he was shagging everybody at that doggone <laughs> airport. He wasn't intimidated by nobody. 
I just don't feel like men are always intimidated if a woman is too successful. I feel like, you know, Gail, you got your standards and they're high. They should definitely be high. You, 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 the, where you run, you gotta go from the White House to the backyard barbecue. Uh, who, but then, Gail, you throw in the mix, you, he gotta be a doggone thug, practically. <laughs> So when you go to the White House, you gonna tell him he can't smoke weed in the backyard, Gail? Is that what you gonna... <laughs> you want him to be able to cross all of these worlds. Sometimes you just gotta open up your range. I think sometimes that women, we fall so much this term boss, boss. We fall so much in, into the boss lady term. You can be successful. Uh, I think sometimes what gets a man is sometimes we don't know how to be soft and fall into the femininity part of the boss of who we are. We gotta, I, I feel that it. Nobody gotta agree with me. You don't have to clap. Um, we're so, we're so into that boss thing and I can do it and not, you know, we have to learn to let go sometimes and just operate in, on that level with the man. But sometimes it's hard because we're so used to being a boss. We have to take care of so many things with the kids and we're having to make the decisions with our family. It's, we talk direct. Sometimes we get abrupt. And so when you get home to your partner or you're going out on a date, it's a little bit harder to soften up and, you, and make that switch very quickly. Uh, when, before I go out on a date, uh, I sit in the Uber and I just practice being soft. <laughs> I do. I practice. Mmm, that smells good. Oh, mmm, you smell good. Ooh, this smells good. And then I practice, and by the end of that, this smells good. My voice is like this. This smells good. Ooh, hey! So, you know, it's that thing because I'm so used to having to talk like this to let people know I mean business. But I tell you, I got girlfriends that have been married for decades. I got one girlfriend, she is a boss at work. Whoa, she does, she knows what she's doing and she does not play. But as soon as her husband calls, I've never seen anything like it. She'll be like, okay, you gotta go over here and do this. And I told you that, hey baby, how you doing? <laughs> uh -huh. I know, I know. He did that, to, he did what to you? Okay, baby, as soon as I'm done, I'm gonna call you back, all right? Okay, sugar, I know I love you too, baby. And she'll hang up and show up anyway, so what I said was we gotta get over here. So, Gail, you are a boss lady, and, and maybe we all need to just work up and soften it up a little bit. <laughs> Y'all, a new study just made a shocking revelation about the younger generation today. Gen Z kids do not like going to the cashier at a grocery store. The Gen Zers said that two, they, two out of three of the Gen Zers prefer using the self-checkout machines. They say it gives them a faster shopping experience that they don't have, they don't have to wait in line, and it's less interaction with people. Okay, this is the problem. This is exactly the problem with these kids and the social media. Because my son, Jeffrey, is the same way. He always says, Mom, why do people have to talk to me? <laughs> and I go, because you're a human being. <laughs> I said, did you call your grandmother? And he goes, I just texted her. Did your grandmother don't know what all those emojis mean, Jeffrey? <laughs> Did you call your dad? I texted him. Like, these kids, and when I go, you pick up the phone, he goes, ugh! <laughs> these kids today, this is why they're so desensitized. I think a lot of social media, the swiping back and forth, and, and you know, they don't have to talk to anybody. They, you know, Snapchat and TikToking, it has allowed the Gen Zers to disengage from other people. You know why I like standing in line at the grocery store? Because there's a person when I get there and I get to say to her, hey girl, how's your day? She gets to look at me and she said, whoo girl, it's been crazy. I get to say, well, when is your shift over? She gets to say in a few hours and I'm like, what? And we laugh. <laughs> We laugh and she'll go, oh, you want this one? Let me find out if you can get two for free and we talk. It's human interaction. If something doesn't work, she figures it out. You remember when you used to write a check and they put in it, check goes down. Like, I like that. I can't, when I tell you and when I call somebody and they don't put a, a, a regular person on the phone, I can't stand there. Press one for this, press two for that. And then I'm, and I, as soon as I pick up that phone, I go, operator. <laughs> I'm sorry, can you tell me what you're calling for?
See, I always want to ask you, but can you tell me what you call Operator. I'm sorry. Let's start again. Ca operator. We can do that, but first, would you mind taking a brief start? Bitch, I said Operator. Operator. Can't stand it. I'm saying, and then they still talk and talk about some press one. Representative. Representative. Then I just start pressing, oh, oh. <laughs> Finally, they go, we'll let us connect you to an operator. But before we do, I'm like, I swear to God. <laughs> but see, the youngsters, they like all of that because they don't have to talk to anybody. And I feel that love is missing in this world. And the only way you get to practice the love is on other people. <laughs> you got to have it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you can practice love on yourself and it feels good, but m for the most part, <laughs> you gotta practice it on other people. You gotta practice love. Y'all need to get your heads out the door. I'm telling you, Norman Baker wasn't gonna let me throw that joke in. I had to fight for it. <laughs> But you know, you gotta practice the love by opening your mouth and saying, how are you to people? People, it's too much going on in this world. So many people just need to hear, how are you doing? They need to see you look in their eyes. <laughs> just enough. And we gotta, we gotta practice that. The greatest thing is that these is love. But I'm telling you, I miss giving my money to a human at the toll booth. They don't have people at the toll booth. Or when you come, if you are in another coast and you coming out the mall, it used to be people that you give your ticket to out the mall. Now you gotta go to the self-serve machine. I like to go to the toll booth or at the mall when I'm coming out of my rental car and say, hey, how are you, ma'am? As I'm digging in my purse. And then they give me my change and we talk for a little bit. The arm raised up because she pressed that button. Now, I done went through the self-serve. I done put the thing in. It says put in where the arrow is, the car getting stuck. Then I put it in. The arm just sitting there. The gate won't rise. Nobody, I'm pressing that button. Nobody's there to help me. People behind me honking at me. By the time, I'm telling you, I'm at the toll booth. By the time I get to my house, it ain't gonna charge me $50 more. <laughs> They didn't caught me on camera looking frustrated. All it is, we, the, the, these little robots and machines are taking over. We need to talk to each other. So these self-checkout um, machines, I'm telling you, if you talk to these Gen Zs now, you go, hello, good morning. They like, wait a minute, what? what? They, huh, huh? <laughs> Come out of zombie land. I think even matter of fact, if they're gonna keep these self-checkout machines, these corporations need to pay some elderly people, give them some money, have an elderly person stand at every dog go and check out, and then when they gotta talk to the kids, good man, I want you to talk slow. Good morning, <laughs> young man. How are you? I'm saying, that's, if we could just start with that kind of interaction, maybe the world would be a better place of <laughs> <with> love. <laughs> Y'all, we have a great show for you today. Because later on, we're cooking with celebrity chef Jamie Oliver. But, <laughs> but up next, straight from Hollis, Queens, Daryl DMC McDaniels is here. Jerry will be right back. knows a lot about FIRST. He's a member of the first hip-hop group to go platinum. They were the first rappers to have a video on MTV, and they were the first non-athletes to get a sneaker deal. Now, in the new docuseries, Kings from Queens, the Run DMC, the Run DMC story, you can see how they change hip-hop forever. Take a look. My first record I ever bought with my own money was the first Run DMC album. I think the record cost $7.99, and I had about three, four dollars, and my man had about four dollars. And we bought the album. It would be at my house for four days, and at his house for three days. I'm telling you, like clockwork, when it was my turn, boom, 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 give me the record, man. To me, Ron was the dopest MC on the planet. It's like Run DMC saying what the hell they want to say why we can't. 
king of rock, Daryl DMC I thought there was a concert going on down here. I know. <laughs> Can I tell you? That's Marco Glorious and DJ Sus One. Yes. Hey. Oh my gosh. So I have to tell you, like, when I was growing up, hip hop was not allowed in my house. Wow. Okay, because my parents just did not understand. Did you have a lot of parents that didn't understand Run DMC back then? Yeah, I remember coming home telling my mother and father, yeah, Run is making this record. He's gonna put me in a group and we're gonna do this hip hop thing. My mama said, that is never going nowhere. It's gonna <laughs> die like the hula hoop. It's gonna go out like the slinky, and they're gonna throw it away like a frisbee. Oh they, my they gosh! Didn't know what it was. Yeah. Okay, and what did she say like as, as, when y'all got big and just she just started saying, put your money in the bank and pay your taxes. <laughs> I love her mama. Yeah, you love her, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I think though, my mother might have let me listen to you if she knew that LL Cool J called you the Martha Stewart of hip hop. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You have well, got I'm to saying. explain that. Well, um, I'm very, 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 very neat and orderly. Really? I would check into a hotel room, dust clean, <gasps> sweep, vacuum, and then I will rearrange the whole hotel room because I wanted to feel like home. Really? Yeah, to the point where I'll leave my room. No, to this day, I'll leave my room and I'll come back and there's five and six maids outside of my door looking in the room. And then when I walk up, they're like, oh my God. But I just like order. So did all the rappers like going to your room instead of their room? Everybody would always come to my room. Okay. Oh yeah. my God. When we saw you... with Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, yes. uh, Will Smith and Charlie Mack would sleep right next door to me. And I would leave my door, you know, the connecting rooms back yeah. in the days, I would leave my door open. And they would come in and be like, my God, it's immaculate in here. <laughs> Because you're so used to thinking of rappers who like they trash the rules when exactly, they get it. Exactly, exactly. The whole rock star thing. But I think that comes from my mother and father, you know. Son of Byford, brother of Al, banners my mother and runs my pal. It's McDaniels, not McDonald's. These rhymes are Daryl's, those burgers are Ronald's. I ran down my family tree. My mother, my father, my brother, and me. <laughs> Thank you. So everywhere I went. I, I took my mother and father's spirit with me. Yes. You know, oh, my. He said, have your fun, but always be polite, always be kind, and always look out for others. <sighs> I just need to touch you, because so, I'm going to go back and touch my well, son's Well, knee. that's why I fell in love with hip-hop anyway. You know, a lot of people don't realize hip-hop was about you better in yourself, yes. so you could better everything that you come in contact with. That's it. And that's it. what you'll see in the documentary. Absolutely. And before we get to the documentary, because I had some uh, a week ago when I was in Dallas, you were selling your own baked goods. DMC yeah. now stands for Daryl Makes, Makes Cookies. cookies. <laughs> I, let me tell you something. I had a bunch of these cookies. They are so good. Everybody tells me they're really, really good. And you know, why did I did cookies? Well, I'm always around children. Okay. I go to high schools, I go to middle schools, I go to elementary schools. I have a children's book out called Daryl's Dream, which is about me in the third grade, just wanting to say my poem. But I noticed that I'm always doing stuff around children and family. So yeah. me, I wanted to do something cool that did, does the same thing my music does. I wanted to make people smile. So I said, yo, DMC, not only does it stand for devastating mic controller, it's going to stand for Daryl Makes Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this so much. <laughs> And everybody loved the DMC play on words. I so love, when I got the bag, I was like, DMC, I loved no, it. Nice now, you reunited with Rev Run for Hip Hop's 50th anniversary. Yes, Look at y'all. And you, you paid tribute to Jam Master Jam J. Jam Master J. How did you feel being back on that stage? Well, people ask me about the performance mm -hmm. part. It's like riding a bike. Okay. You never forget it. I mean, I felt the same way in Yankee Stadium in 2023. It was the same way I felt in 1983 when I first took the stage, not to do a catalog of records, to do my first singles. 
But when it comes to the J, Jam Master J thing, his spirit is with us every day. Let me show you something. You see this belt buckle? I wear it every day so that every time you see DMC, you know he's chilling with Jay. <laughs> Oh. So he, um, long, um, to sum it all up, Jim SJ taught me and run a lot. From when we first formed the group, we didn't have a DJ yet. Okay. So me and Run was all over the place. Yeah. When we needed a DJ, Jim SJ was the best DJ in Queens, so he gave us our sound, he gave us our style, and Jay would always tell us this. Even in the beginning, as the fortunate fame came, he would always say, yo, we can have all the fun that we want, but we gotta watch what we do, mm. and we gotta watch what we say. That's why at Run DMC, we only said a bad word on two records. Really? Our whole career. And the only time we used the cuss word is because people wasn't paying attention, so we had to cuss to make them listen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have been around for so long. You've been through... 40 of the 50 years of hip-hop. 40 of the 50 years. You've been up, you've been down. Through so much adversity, you've yeah. had mental health struggles. Yeah. You've I was an alcoholic, suicide, a metaphysical, spiritual wreck who was thinking of jumping off a roof. And at 35 years old, I found out I was adopted and was a foster kid. Jam Master Jay got shot and killed, and then my father died. So imagine what I was going through. But um, when I found out that I was adopted, and then yeah. I found out I was a foster kid, um, somebody, another adoptee had asked me, don't you want to know what was happening before you went to Hollis? And at first I was like, no, I don't want to know that. Y'all heard the records, Christmas time in Hollis, Queens. Mom's cooking to DMC from Queens. But then I realized my story didn't start in Hollis, Queens. That's right. So I knew if I was going to go look at that first chapter of my life, I had to be of sound mind and body. So I went to rehab to stop drinking. Yes. And it was in rehab where I found the most gangster, powerful thing any man, woman, boy, girl, Italian, Asian, no matter who you are, the most powerful thing that you can do is therapy. Therapy, and absolutely. Therapy. Talk about your vulnerability, because when you admit you're weak, scared, confused, and vulnerable, as soon as you say, say that, all the strength that you need will come your way. So I'm no. sitting here today able to look at all the things that we've done, Run DMC and Jam Master J, to inspire all those people like Ice Cube. But people ask me, D, what is your greatest achievement? You know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is cool, Grammys yes. is cool and all of that. But my greatest achievement is sobriety, and I represent. Now, this is what I want to ask you, because you talk about making yourself vulnerable. Yeah and being able to achieve this greatness. And you didn't do it by yourself. Your woman, your oh, wife, wife of 30 years, Zuri. Yes. Ah. Uh, yep, there she go. Who helps you. What does, what does her love mean to you? Let me show you what love is. When I met my wife, I met her here on Broadway when we put the Down With The King album out in 93. All right. So she, what, what's in the uh, documentary, she didn't like that. When I met my wife, so she loved New Edition, and check this out, y'all. She thought Run DMC was a white rock band. <laughs> but here's the beautiful thing about my wife. When I met her, she wasn't part of the rise of the building of the kingdom. Okay. When I met my wife after Down went to King, the kingdom was falling apart. Mm -hmm. The kingdom was burning. The kingdom was going out of the existence. I was an alcoholic, suicide, a metaphysical, spiritual wreck. There was, matter of fact, there was no army, there was no support, there was no fortress or nothing. No and she stayed did. with me through it all. And she stayed through it all. So I gotta rush out of here, because today's her birthday, and she said I could only leave the house because I was coming here to see you. Oh! So happy birthday, honey! Thank you, Zuri! <laughs> and I don't want to make you late for your birthday <laughs> date, because Zuri let you out to be here. Zuri, yes. I love you, and I thank you for that. We're gonna let you get Zuri to her birthday. Y'all. Kings from Queens, the Run DMZ story premieres on Peacock on February 1st. And up next, we're cooking with celeb chef Jamie Oliver. Keep it right here. <laughs> Jerry will be right back.
ignited a food revolution that swept through our kitchens more than two decades ago. Uh, look, look, I'm over here cooking already. Now the celebrity chef and author is back to share a few recipes from his new cookbook, Five Ingredient Mediterranean. Please welcome Chef Jamie Oliver. Yay! Now look at you. I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't want them to burn. You're okay. doing just fine, baby. Okay. You, honestly, you are absolutely smashing it. OK. Hello, everyone. We're going to cook five ingredients. So, look, I've been working out that people yes. don't like long shopping lists. Right? No, we they don't like long. They want to keep it easy. They want to keep it quick. They want big flavour. Yes. So I've taken this cookbook on a holiday. On a holiday? To the med. All right, to the med. Yeah. Before we even start that, I just have to say, you hit 10 million followers on Instagram. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, that's not no easy feat. Yeah, yeah. How are you feeling inspiring millions? Uh, I love it. I love being able to talk to the world, listening to them, what they love, what they hate, what they're worried about. And then my job is to answer that with recipes and trying to get more kids cooking and trying to get you guys cooking as well. That's, that's what, what it's we all about. like. That is what we love. Okay. So last time we were talking about you being married when you were here, you've been married 23 years. I have. You renewed your yeah. wedding vows. Yeah. And I love that blue suit that you had on. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Is that the same blue suit? <laughs> I wish it was the same blue suit, but it's a bit bigger this time, but you know. Uh -huh. I've got five kids and I only plan two, so come on, <laughs> come on. I've earned my stripes. So did that, so you said that the ceremony meant more to you than the actual yeah. wedding. Yeah, look, the first time I got married, those words, it's like, what are they talking about? What? Yeah, and I just go through it and you're stressed. But yeah. then when you did that, you know, 23 years later, uh, We'd, we'd earn all those words, right? Yes. Uh, and, and I felt that it... I actually... I think I enjoyed it more than anyone. So uh, I am an old romantic after all. So thank you well, very much. Well, there you go. Now, before we get started on the five meds, OK, uh, you can scan the QR code on your screen for all of today's recipes. OK, so, Chef Jamie, what are we making today? OK, this so we're going to we're gonna do some nice little meatballs or little koftas, right? This is inspired by uh, the, the Greek Ooh. islands, right? So mm. if you go... Let's just talk about the five ingredients. We've got mince meat, right? All right? I'm using lamb. You could use pork, chicken. You could blend it, do whatever you want, right? All this right. is a nice little principle. Tzatziki, you can buy it in all the supermarkets. Tzatziki. We're going to hit it up with some mint. You choose your own herb, as long as it's legal. All right. right. Uh, and and, and <laughs> then we've got jarred peppers here and a lemon. Five ingredients. Five, that's it. And we're going to make a plate of food like this. Oh, that okay? looks good. So this is a nice thing to do. So okay. I'm going to get my hands dirty. They're clean. All right. right? We're going to hit it up with some seasoning. Lots of black pepper. We like Season pepper. that up with salt. I've got some peppers here from the jar. Jarred veggies are great. Different ones. Are they? I've got some in here just frying up nice. OK. And then a little bit of them I've chopped up here. Mm -hmm. You can take some of that herb as well and just chop that up. And then chop. look at that lemon over there. Do you like lemon? I love lemon. OK. So okay. lots of people just use the juice. But if you what give it... What should we do? Give it a little roll. Right, okay. it gets the oils in the skin going. The lemon zest going in your meatballs. So you put the zest or you in there. Oh, baby, mint, you know, that peppers that are sweet, the salt, the pepper. Yes. And then you get your hands in there, you scrunch it up. I know people don't like touching food. Here's the oh. thing, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to earn flavour, you've got to earn it, right? Okay. So you can put rubber gloves on if that's your thing, mm -hmm. right? No, I don't care. But, uh... You can do my body the way you're doing that meat. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of man I need. <laughs> I love it. So listen, on that note, we can go big or we can go small. What do you prefer, guys? Big. Oh, I we thought you'd say go that. Big. There we go. <laughs> so look, we're going to take those balls. We'll fry them off for like four or five minutes until golden and delicious. We're going to take that store-bought tzatziki. Now, what's in there? What's Greek, in the tzatziki? Garlic, lemon, uh, Greek yogurt. We've got mint in there, and mm. of course, the Greeks use it a lot as a sauce. We yeah. can take that. If we whiz that up with the mint, okay. that's what you get. Oh, you get the green. So in this book, right, I'm trying to make it easy for you to kind of hack flavours and All cheat. Right. So we're going to take that minty tzatziki, which is now a sauce, right? I'm then going to take the beautiful uh, meat, uh, the koftas here and place that around. What did you call it, the koftas? Yeah, well, they would call it a kofta. Okay. Like, you can put that on a kebab. We okay. can call it a meatball. It's all kind right. of all the same kind of thing, right? Oh, it looks so good. Do you like, do you like, um, do you like, like, like different flavours from different countries? I love, yes, I do. Yeah? I love different flavours from different yeah. countries, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that's... Yes. <laughs> so what we, what we want to do is then just pick over some herbs, and there we go. That's a beautiful plate. Have that with some rice. Have that with some pitta. We whatever like you want. it. Get it in there. Now, look, I know this. You are an amazing chef. 
You're somebody. We talked about him last time. Yes. He's been popular on YouTube, and yep. he's now got a BBC show teaching I kids know. to cook I healthy. Know. And look, he's, like, he's so cool with it. Like, about three, four years ago, we both agreed, because like, having your kids do stuff on YouTube is a bit weird. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and then, but the thing is, the power of children cooking is so yes. amazing. And I had like grown men coming up saying, look, I never really followed you, but your son's got me cooking. <laughs> so me and Buddy, we, we set up Cooking Buddies and it was to get kids from every country in the world to put up their favorite simple recipe. Yeah. Uh, and it's gone crazy. So now he's got his own show and now I can retire and it's all gonna be good. <laughs> now he wanted to wait to do the show. Did he want to wait to no, do it? Uh, no, he kind of, he doesn't really care. He's just a kid. He's just going with the flow, but he happens yeah. to be quite good at it. All right. Shall I tell you what's going on, sister? What is going on here? Okay, so good. we've taken broccoli, right? and we're actually nothing in the pan. We're scalding it, we're charring it. We get smokiness and internal steaming, right? We're gonna take- but This is the way you scold food. Oh we yeah. Don't scold it. <laughs> this is so good. We're gonna take jarred beans, tinned beans. They're cannellini beans, have any beans you like. We're mm -hmm. gonna hit it up with salt, pepper, and a secret little ingredient that you don't normally do. What's a that? little thimble of vinegar, olive oil, right? And oh, that's yeah? gonna dress it up, baby, right? That's okay. gonna dress it up. Oh, nice. And then what we're gonna do is Arrange this on a beautiful plate. I know you can't see me through the steam. Bless you all. Okay. Um, but what we're going to do is create a nice little salad or side dish. Okay. So if you go uh, to parts of the Mediterranean, they're so good. The with, salads there? Yeah, they're so good with beans. Yes. And, and beans are so good for you. So I'm going to show you a quick little pickle. Okay. Finely That's chopped. Okay, you chop uh, up the pickle. We like pickle for crunch and tang. Mm -hmm. Just finely chop it with a little bit of vinegar and salt. We've got those charred... You said vinegar and salt or yeah. salt? Yeah, yeah, vinegar and salt. salt. Not, no, not salt. salt. That's, that's my dodgy accent. I do okay. apologise. Salt. Uh, so we put the vinegar, we'll put mm. the salt, we'll mm -hmm. scrunch it up, and then... Scrunch it up. If you see these beans, they're getting creamy. I do. We like creamy. Okay. Right, so we're going to go in with the beans like that. That's with the beans base. beans like that. Hot, creamy beans. Hot, the hot, creamy beans. We've got the charred broccoli. Yeah, do, that, do it up like they do my body. Yeah. With the same <laughs> We're gonna take the we're gonna take these beautiful little anchovies here. You can have the dried ones or the right pickled there. ones or whatever gets you going. And uh -huh. then we're gonna hit it up with those pickles uh -huh. for a crunch. I just ate the beans and the broccoli. The creamy bean salad is amazing. We did it. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jim Jamie, thank you so much for being here it's and a joy. for more info on Jamie's cookbook. It's a joy. Five ingredients, Mediterranean. Woo! Flavor. Go to SherryShowTV.com. We'll be right back. Mm -mm, Sherry, we'll be right back. Let's play Who Knows Best. Now, I am here with Brittany from Pennsylvania. Brittany. And Jennifer from New York. Jennifer. Okay, so Brittany and Jennifer, I'm going to ask a question about award season, and if you know the answer, you grab the bag. So the first person to grab it gets to answer, but you have to let me finish the question first. All right, and when you hear this sound... Hey, family! <laughs> that means the game is over, and whoever has the most correct is the winner. All right, you ready to play? I'm ready, yes. All right, oh, all right, well, we like this! We like this! See, now this could have been with a self-checkout, but we like to play That's with right. people. All right, so here's the first question. What dreamy comedian and my crush will be hosting this year's Grammy Awards? Oh. Well, hot. Well, so, all right, all right. Brittany got it first? Brittany. Okay, so Brittany. Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Oh. All right, we're gonna put this right back there. What Abbott Elementary star made history by becoming the second black woman to win the Emmy for Best Comedic Actress? Okay. <laughs> what say you? My girl, Quinta Brunson. Quinta Brunson. All right, we're tied. The next question. What film is the most nominated at this year's Oscar? What do you say? Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer is it. Okay. With nine nominations, what artist is the most nominated at this year's Grammys? SZA. SZA! All right, Woo! now. Here we go. What legendary performer joined the EGOT Club after winning an Emmy this year? What do you say? Elton John. Elton John! <laughs> All right. Which This Is Us actor garnered his first... Oh, 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 it's over. Okay, so give me the score. All right, Brittany, you win. Woo! You got the most. All right, so we're gonna open the bag and see what you have won. 
All right. You won a $250 cash gift card. Thank you so much for playing, y'all. And we'll be right back. Sherry, we'll be right back. One last laugh, and today's laugh comes from Ireland, where a trucker tried to distract an unsuspecting office worker with his sexy stripper moves. Take a look. Magic Mike gets sent to human resources. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Sherry, we'll be right back. Everything you love about the show is available online. Follow at Sherry Show TV on all your social platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Follow Sherry Show TV now. We'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. On Monday, actress Patina Miller will be here. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye. <laughs>